Hello everyone, it's Cheryl from Tinker's Cart Art and I'm here to paint with you today again. So I am so happy that you're here. I can see people popping on. So hello and say hello to me when you come on. We're going to paint a cool project today and I'm sort of untangling my little um, bit of... Uh, pine and berries here to use on it. Thank you guys. Thanks for popping in. Say hello. Tell me where you're watching from because I'm always thrilled to know. I am Cheryl from Tinker's Cart Art and I am coming to you from Clinton, Massachusetts. So I'm in New England. Hey Karen. Hey Terry Ann. Thank you guys for popping in. I really appreciate it. It'll be fun today to paint together. And um, Yoli, hello. Welcome. Let me know if you guys are the first time watching or if you have been with me before. And I'm going to pull you up on my computer here so I can answer any questions as I go. And if I miss your question, I always come back and I will answer it later on. Hey, Tracy. Good afternoon. How are you? Nice to see you. And nice to see everyone, Carol. Welcome. I don't know if you guys saw me pop on live the other day when I came back from Michael's. I went and I didn't need a single thing. Naturally, I came home with things because I do love to check out the clearance um, sections. And I don't know if you saw that I got this lantern in the clearance section. Hi, Gail. 70% off. So um, I know I feel like a spokesperson for Michaels or Target or Dollar Tree, but these were $24.95. It was marked down 70% off, so it was $7.07. And it's nothing um, Halloween about it. You could decorate this for any season. I think it would be kind of fun. And hello, Judy. Yep, Judy was asking about my, I have a couple of art memberships. Tinker's Cardist is where I paint with you live uh, two times a month and you get two recorded paintings for uh, pieces of content each month. I also have the Tinker's a la carte club and that is one painting a month and that's just um, a recording that is sent to you. Um, so, and if any questions, you guys, I can post a link or something or just message me and ask me. I do have some art memberships that are kind of fun. Hey, Robin from South Carolina. Welcome. Oh, crafty mom. Thanks for watching, Tracy. Um, so anyways, Michaels, I, I bought a bunch of things. I actually got this lantern, which I'll start painting it soon because we have 45 minutes and I, and I always make it in the nick of time, but I also, um, don't know if you saw these signs were seasonal, but look, it's a big frame sign on an easel. And I'm going to repurpose it by painting this over black or maybe do uh, dark blue and do a nighttime snowman scene or Santa. Um, that was, that ended up being $4 and something. That was super inexpensive. So um, do check it out because, and keep in mind to repurpose things. Think of the things that you see don't always have to be for that season or holiday. Um, it's kind of fun to figure out something else to do with it. So I picked this up while I was there. I'm going to paint it uh, wintry. And so I did find these, um, you know, these little uh, things that people make wreaths with. But look at I don't even have to do much. I think I'll set it right inside that when it's done. And a little snowman, I think, a little winter snowman. You could do anything on this. Birch trees and cardinals. I should have done that. That would have been nice with the red berries. Um, all sorts of ideas. So let's jump in and start painting. I will incorporate a red cardinal on my snowman maybe so that we can bring the red in from this. But if you picked up a few of these, you could get different sorts of uh, seasonal little uh, wreaths for it to sit in. So that would be kind of cool. Um, hi, Teresa. I'm trying to watch all your comments and say hello, but I also want to start because so, it's not... Um, it's not a lot of fun just to watch me talk, so it'd be fun to watch me paint, I think. I'm using, um, I'm using for this, since it's glass, they're acrylics, but they are the multi-surface multi uh, ones, which I use for all my glass painting. There's Folk Art brand, there's also Deco Art makes one, they're multi-purpose, and they're good for painting on ceramic tile, glass, that sort of thing. If I was doing my wine glasses or anything that we're gonna use uh, and wash, I would follow the instructions on here as far as baking them right in your oven, very simple directions, and it keeps it so that you can actually wash them. This is just decorative. We don't need to really wash it, so I am going to paint it and not put it in the oven. The candle that's in here is battery operated, so that's kind of cool. You don't have to worry about replacing it. Um, and so I've just got a few colors out on my palette. Water soluble, these are, just like your acrylics. And um, sometimes painting on the glass is a little slick, so you might need two coats. You want to let it dry a little bit in between. And what I do first is I wipe it down with some alcohol. 
removes any fingerprints, any grease on your fingers or any dirt. So uh, if I'm doing wine glasses, salt and pepper shakers, anything, wipe it down with some alcohol first. And now mine is all set to go. And I paint snowmen a lot. I love snowmen. These are some little things I painted. So I don't need a pattern. I'm just going to go and start and then um, kind of freehand it. So no worries. Hey, Doreen and Charlene. Oh, I love to see where you are watching from. And April, welcome. Okay, so when I do my snowmen, I shade them a bit, as you can see, um, with like a darker blue. And then I put the white. So what I'm going to do to make it easier to paint on this guy, I'm going to paint the snow area the snowmen all in a light gray blue. And when that dries, I'll put on the solid white, leaving some areas where a shadow might fall. And that is um, a, an easier way for me to do this. And I'm just using my little synthetic brushes. They're very simple. I'm taking some white on my palette and I'm just gonna add a little blue, tiny bit of black. I just want a bit of a gray blue here to start. Maybe a little lighter than that because that's gonna form my shadows afterwards. And what's nice about painting snow and snowmen is the texture that you can use. You don't worry about getting a nice smooth line. I like to really blob the paint on and give it some texture so it does look like snow. Welcome, Ethel. Um, thank you guys. It's so nice to see everybody. I know it's the middle of the afternoon, but it's so nice to see everybody popping on. You could, um, I'm going to start, this has a little, just a little seed bubble in it. So I'm gonna go on this side. And I'm going to just give myself a little base for my snowman to sit on. So that's just going to be a little snow pile on the bottom. You can see it's just in a light blue. And then I think I might do, I'm going to do one snowman. Maybe I'll put some birch trees around him and then add my cardinals. Um, great icons for winter is the snowman and the birch trees and the cardinals. Uh, snowmen, you can paint all different ways. I go a little traditional with just like if we we're building them, like three little balls. But snowmen could be any shape. You know, you could do them more triangular, however you'd like. I even on this guy did a little snow dog. See my little dachshund there, my little snow dachshund. So you could paint all sorts of things. Um, you know what I do a lot of times is I paint as many for a family, say. So you can paint as many snowmen in the family. You could paint a you know, a mom and then the kids or dad and some kids or and just vary the sizes. So I've got a snowman on there now in the light blue. He's a little off center. So I'm going to put a small one after talking about small ones. Let's put another little one in there. Let's put a little one in there. Just making circles. I'm not, I'm not um, tracing anything on because I've done, like I said, a lot of snowmen and uh, this will be fine. If you wanted to trace a design and you're more comfortable with that, you could take a scrap piece of paper, draw on your snowman and tape it inside your glass and then, and then use that to go by. So don't worry if you'd rather have a traced on pattern, that's no problem. You know, you could always do that. So there, that's a little more centered now here. And while that dries, I'm going to put my little birch trees on. And remember, I'm going right off the top of my head. I, you guys are so good because I come on here and I hardly even know what I'm going to do till a few minutes before. And then I sort of come on and, 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 and just, you know, improvise. It's kind of fun that way when it's not too planned. It's a little bit of a challenge. So um, I'm going to do my birch trees in um, maybe a little bit of a gray. Again, the idea is starting with a little darker shade, then that forms my shadow and then I can go in and put a little white on that birch tree and it's going to look more rounded than if it's just white. So, and I'm painting upside down too. Look at that. Um, birch trees. I'm going to just do some, they're pretty straight all the way up. So I'm just going to paint them in. Can you see I've got a bit of a gray there? And they're going to kind of taper off. So we're not going to worry about getting them too thin. These are just, just a little bit of a birch tree here. And that's all we need to do for those guys. I'm going to put some on the other side too. What's everyone painting these days? I'd love to know. I love Halloween and, and I know now I have to stop. But uh, so I do love holiday too. And we'll go into Christmas and, and winter and, and all that. But I did enjoy so much all of the Halloween painting. But what are you guys all working on? Are you guys painters? Are you more crafters? I love to uh, share my love of painting with you all. Um, and uh, even if you think you can't paint or if you've never painted before, I make it super easy. I try to do it slowly, step by step for you. So 
Sometimes on the 45 minute segments, I'm not going too slow. I know that. Hey, Karen, thank you for watching. Hi, it's so good to see you. Andrea too. Thank you guys. All right, we've got the base coat of our snowman and four birch trees. Since I have birch trees on there, I'm going to put a little bit of branches coming off. I'm going to go light with those because I'm not going to shade the branches. They're littler. When you're painting something thin like branches, you want a nice thin line. And I know people say, oh, I can't. That's one of my biggest struggles. I can't get fine lines. It's um, not sometimes that you can't get them, but you need the right brush. You need the paint thinned down to the right consistency too. And a light touch. So if I'm trying to get a thin line and I'm bearing down with my brush, you're not going to get it. Light, light touch. When I'm doing thin lines, I'm sometimes got a light, light touch. I thin my paint down to be like a uh, consistency of ink more than paint. I want it to flow nice for me. You can use, I like to sometimes use the flat on the chisel end, but good choice is also your um, liner brush that you can get, you can load with a nice bit of paint, water down, get some nice thin lines. So either of these brushes would work fine for the branches. And I'm just starting at the tree and just light, light touch, put in my brush. I might press a little bit here and then I get a little lighter, 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 pull the brush right off of the surface and you're gonna get a little thinner line than if you were kind of stressing about it, using a little too much pressure, worrying about it, and you need a thinner brush. This, If you've got a flat with a nice chisel edge, you can get that thin line. Or like I said, the liners are great. I always, if you, I know you can't see my, my, my water bucket here, but I do keep dipping in and thinning down that, um, that paint, even every couple strokes. I want it to have thin, thin little line. You don't need too many. I've got a few little um, branches coming off my tree there and actually painting it upside down for me is easier when I'm doing branches because I can pull that branch towards me a bit and, and lift and I'm getting a thin line. So brush strokes take a little practice sometimes. You can do really cool things with brush strokes. You can do um, one stroke flowers, and those are really fun. You could do roses and things. It's just practicing the brush strokes and it's fun and it's relaxing sometimes. I know we've gotten together in my membership group and we sometimes just get together to, to connect and chat and then we practice our brush strokes. It really does help and it's, like I said, it's a little relaxing and fun. Okay, so that's our bases there. Snowmen, they're already dry so we can start painting them. We will get the little black highlights on our birch trees and when that's dry, we'll do those little black triangle bits that you find on birch trees. Hi, Dana. I'm trying to see you guys as you pop on. And if I miss you, I'm saying hello still because um, I will go back after two and see what you have to say. Stella, thank you. I would love to um, have you share um, or let your friends know about me and my painting. And I just love to paint and I love the more the merrier. So um, what kind of paint am I using? They are acrylics, but they are a multi-surface. I have a lot of folk art and deco art, the gloss enamels. You can find them a lot if they have that icon on the top, it means you can use it on uh, ceramic and glass. And I use it for all my wine glasses. I do wine glass painting uh, as well. And you can use the direct, follow the instructions on the bottle, which is simply letting the paint dry, um, putting it in a cool oven, 30, degree, 30 minutes at 350, let it cool in the oven, and that seals the paint on your glassware. So that's a good, and, the, and it's right on the bottles there. So, hey Tracy, thanks for watching. Okay, so let's put some white on our snowman. Afterwards, we'll make a put a little hat on them, maybe, and some scarves. You could put mittens. Oh, you could, so many different ways to paint snowmen, and they're so fun. And um, I'm just going to glance over at my computer in case I'm missing any messages because I'm, I'm sort of multitasking here. So I want to make sure I catch any remarks or anything that you questions. Hey, Nance. Um, I love painting the, um, I love painting the snowman and so don't you. And uh, you're, Nancy's a fabulous painter too. And Karen, okay, I'm going to wave back at you. <laughs> okay, so some white. I'm not going to go ahead on to my snowman now and paint them all white because I need to leave some of that blue for highlighting. So how do I do that? I'm going to paint, I'm going to leave, say, pick a side. Um, I'm going to leave the left side a little bit more blue and each little ball of snow is going to cast a little shadow underneath it. So I'm going to leave a little blue there. So I'm going to go in and start just filling up 
And like I said, I don't mind texture. I'm not worrying to get it, about getting it really thin. I like it if it's a little blobby and heavy like snow would be. So I'm just kind of putting a little bit of white on that right hand side, leaving a little bit underneath there. Just to start. And then I'm gonna build it up a little brighter on the very right. Same with the snow bank under here. There's a little shadow from the snowman sitting on the snow. So I would leave a little bit of shadow of dark blue under there. And you see from a distance now, even from a distance and not blended well, it's it's got some form, it looks round. So that's just a matter of shading and highlighting. And we're not doing much of that here. We are just using two cups really. And I'm going to do the same on my little guy. I'm leaving a little bit underneath. Can you see why? So it looks like a little bit like there's a shadow from the top there. This little circle here, same thing. And same here, a little bit under. If it's a highlight there, if it's bright white and then a little blue under, it looks like it's casting a shadow. So I'm going to just put a little more white on that snow down below. Now, this is almost looking fine to me the way it is, but if you want to blend a little more, because sometimes you really want to get a blended look and in acrylics, it is a little harder in acrylics because it dries so quick. If you're painting in oils, and I do love, I'm a, a, a long time oil painter. I love how I can blend those colors together. So I try to make my acrylics behave that way. I work a little quickly. I sometimes use the paint a little thicker but you can also blend wet and wet. So I know my blue here is dry, but I'm gonna get a little more white on there and then I may just take a little more of that little light blue gray color we made and just uh, soften it a bit. So let's just get it a little brighter. We want it brightest on the right side. And then I'm gonna just softly bring that color in till it's almost gone on the brush. But can you see while it's wet, these little strips I put here, I'm softening it in. I'm gonna put it on and that's why I work a little fast because I wanna go ahead now and just soften it a bit before it dries. So I'll put it on heavier where I want it and then soften it a bit. And it's funny because when I look on camera, I see things a little differently and it to me it looks, does it look blended to you guys? It does to me from here. I'm going to actually blend a little more with the wet and wet so you can see that technique. But remember you guys, when you're working and you're painting and you're this close to it and you're finding lots of things wrong that you don't like and oh, this is not good, I'm not gonna finish this, I don't like the way this is coming out, don't. Step away. No one else is looking at it here. They're looking at it from four feet away or, or from a distance and when you step away and look, you're gonna be able to look with fresh eyes and, and be able to judge a little more and see if there's something that you might wanna tweak. But generally it's fine, um, but a trick is, is to hold it up in a mirror or take a photograph, like me looking at the video, and things will, um, you'll get a better look at things that way. So if you're a little unsure, try those little techniques um, when you're painting. So if we wanted to do a wet and wet blend, I don't know if we really need to, but I want to show it to you. All I would do now is go back to that color that we used and I would just re-wet it a little bit. Just quickly, just one section at a time. Dry off your brush. I'm always using um, a paper towel or something. Dry the brush off. And with that dry brush, you can now blend a little bit of that color while it's wet right into your other color. So if you want a softer blend, if you're getting too harsh of a line, it doesn't have to be done. You could just go ahead back in and re-wet the two areas. Like I said, section at a time so that you don't have it drying too quickly. But in between, the, uh, I applied the blue color. I'm really drying my brush off now. And I can even go back if my white has dried a little bit. And now I'm just softening those colors together. Just like you could do if you were painting in oils. You're just softening it. Now, if I step back and I think, oh, well, he's really too blue. He shouldn't be that blue. I can go back with some white. But like I said, in, in my view in the video, it looks okay. And you guys tell me what you think. Tell me if you think that it's blended enough for a little snowman body. It's just a little whimsical kind of a thing. I think so. So now on the, on the birch trees, we've just done the whole tree in a, in a gray because we want to just now take our white 
And we might as well use the same light source. I'm not being real particular here. It's not a, a fancy landscape or still life. But since I've got my bright side on the right-hand side of my snowman, I think I will do the same thing. I will go down the right-hand side with the white for the bird's tree. And what I can do is just put that white strip on. I'm not worrying about it being straight or perfect. It's a tree. It's natural. It's not going to be straight or perfect. Dry my brush off, and before I end, I could just soften that in a bit. So I'm going to do the same thing on all of these. I'm just going down the right side. Dry off my brush. Soften that. And can it, does it look a little rounded? It does, right? It looks a little bit like a rounded shape on the film, on the, on the film, on the video. There, same thing over here. What, what what makes these little guys really pop is when you put those little black bits on that are typical of the birch trees. We have lots of beautiful birch trees up here in New England. Oh, I wanna hold it up a little. I know I'm kind of putting it down a little bit. I'm gonna to try to keep it up so you can see. Sometimes you can do that line and it's almost blended by itself. It's almost like you don't even have to go back and soften it. There. Not going to fuss with the branches. You could get as crazy as you want with tiny little branches coming off the branch. I think that's good. We're going to spatter snow on here afterwards. No one's going to look at the teeny little details. And since that dries so fast, let's just go in and do the little black bits. I don't know what they're called. You know, those little triangly things. Um, and since this is a little more of a detail thing, I'm going to add some water to my brush and thin my black paint down. Again, details, I want to use a thin down paint, more like ink. That will solve a lot of your problems if you have problems painting and trying to get a nice smooth line, um, especially in little areas. For this, I just am making these little triangle bits here and there. And I don't mind, the, the white is a little wet, but it kind of makes it look a little more natural if, if my black blends there a little bit. These are really irregular little shapes on the birch trees. I know I kind of do them triangular a lot from the outside in, but you could have some little bits that are just little bits of black. So do them quickly. The quicker you do them, the less you think about them and make them perfect and too contrived. Just go on and think birch tree and then, then you'll get one, a birch tree. It's like a painting tiger stripes kind of. I don't put anything on the branches. If I had a big, 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 big tree and I'm painting on a big canvas, I would probably go in and do some on the branches. I'd get a little more detail, but this is a little adorable 70% off lantern from um, Michaels. And I did buy, actually I was in uh, Target the other, the other day and I got these cute little snowman things that I just bought in that little section. What's that called when you go into Target, that little section with the cool stuff that you don't need, but you buy anyway? Okay, so just, I had no idea what I was going to paint on this when I started, you guys. I know it was a snowman, but I didn't really think about birch trees. But because of that um, little wreathy thing I'm going to put around the bottom and the red berries, um, I think it'll be nice to have a red cardinal in the tree. And actually, you know, I do a painting similar to this at my paint nights, and um, I put little bushes in front of the birch trees that have red berries. So let's put some in just for fun. And then we can get the berries in there because of course I'm dying to get some berries. Just a little brown twiggy thing. Um, I got a little black in my brown just to make it uh, show up. And so it's just going to be a little bush with uh, just little twigs really. And it's going to have just dots. I'm going to make them with the back end of my brush. Red dots, red berries, just to, uh, it'll be nice with that little um, wreathy thing going across the bottom. I'm not even taking into account, which I probably should have, maybe make him come up a little higher so the little wreath around the bottom won't block, but uh, we'll worry about that later. This is all for fun. We're not going to stress out. Let's not stress out when we're painting. Let's not start with the attitude that, that, oh, I can't paint. I don't know. It's not coming out good. I really don't like it. It's just for fun. Do it for yourself. Do it as an activity that is bringing you joy and it's fun. Um, it's not about stress. And if you're sitting down and you're painting a little bit and you're having fun, you're gonna come and do it again. And then you're gonna do it again and then you might do it again. And what happens then? You get better at it. So let's just enjoy the process, okay? Let's just enjoy the process and have fun. While I'm doing these branches, I should do their little arms because they're made of sticks. So let me give them some stick arms. 
and they get stick arms. They're getting a little lost. Can you see through the glass? They're a little lost, but you know what I'm gonna do so that they stand out is put a little white on them maybe, as if snow's fallen and is on the branches. Um, and then you'll see them a little better. But I do put a little, few little branches out on those little twiggy arms they've got going. Sometimes I put mittens on the end of them. We'll do whatever we have time for today. But see the little arms, they are a little hard to see, so I would just take a little bit of white and just on top of the arm. And then it's going to show up a little more for you. Although popping a pair of mittens on, a little, some mittens on them would work too. So now you can kind of see their little arms more. Hey Mary, thanks for watching. Um, oh, so let's pop a few little uh, berries on that little bush down there. I'm just using a little dotting tool, a little stylus. You could use the back end of your brush though, whatever you have that works. Just red, just popping those in. You know, I'm so worried about matching the little wreathy bit that I'm going to put on. The wreath bits I thought were on sale at Michael's. Chris, some of the Christmas was 50 or 40 percent off. I don't know if that was. I don't, I didn't see a big sale on my receipt, but I did have some coupon or another that took a little off, but I really scoured the 70% off section. Just little, whoops, little berries on those uh, little branchy bits I put on the bottom. I've got to put faces. These guys are, these guys need faces. I'm kind of uh, looking at little zombie um, snowmen. So let's put some fa a face on them. Hats. Um, I know the traditional uh, hat with the black, top hat but I usually put like stocking caps on or knit hats on them so this little one here say we want to put a little stocking cap let's I'm going to do lime green and I just put a little band across like as a little band of the hat sitting so you can see where it's going to go and I sometimes just make them flying off into the into the wind now the thing about this is a little transparent so you're seeing my birch tree right through the hat so to fix that, all I do is I just cover it with white for now, and then I'll go back over it with my green. I like to use bright colors. It doesn't always have to be red and green. Teals and purples and oranges, whatever, will work. But he's got this little hat that is sort of blowing off in the breeze there. And we don't have much room. I didn't leave a whole lot of room up here for this one. So let's put a cardinal sitting in a little nest on its head. I am being very ambitious for a 45-minute set, aren't I? But it'll work. Yeah, teal. Sue, I love teal. I was on the biggest teal and pink, and I'm not a pink girl by any means, all for a long time now, doing everything teal and pink. I do love it. So, okay. Well, we have, it looks like 17 minutes left, and we can do this cinchy. And sometimes I go and add a few little touches later, but uh, hey, Zena. Hi, Betty. Sandy's watching, and Fran. Okay, I'm going to do a bird nest on top um, of this guy's head and I'm just going to put on some brown looks like a little crown kind of it's gonna look like twigs maybe it's just gonna be a little bird's nest I'm putting that brown on there let it dry and then I will uh, throw a little white on there let's put a little cardinal sitting in there though and that's gonna be kind of fun the paints on this glass sometimes are very streaky or transparent. The, this, the blue covered really nicely because it had some white mixed in. If you add white to whatever color it is, it will get more opaque and cover well. So I am going to add white to my little uh, red bird. He's gonna look pink, but when it dries and I go back with the red, then I cover it. So it's easier to just make it lighter to start and then get your color on that you really need it to be. And the Cardinals have that little, um, a little, I'm gonna make this little head, and you know they have that little thing that comes up on their head, so that's what makes them look like a cardinal, really. And I know it's a pink cardinal, but it's going to be a cardinal, and uh, it'll be nice and bright red after. And I was gonna do cardinals in the trees, but I'm skipping that, because the, the branches aren't really heavy enough to hold a little bird, so the cardinal that we're incorporating is gonna be on the head of that snowman. Okay, they need faces, like I said. What do we want to do? Little, I just usually do little black eyes, orange nose, usually a smiley mouth. It doesn't have to be like 
you can make it like a little uh, pieces of coal, but I'd usually just make a little cute mouth. And for eyes, it could be simple as two black dots made with the back of your brush. Or you could get even a little more fancy and make, you know, little eyes and pupils and all that. But for the sake of time, and, and even they're pretty cute, I will do them black like this, but then I will put a little white highlight when they dry. I will put an orange nose. And sometimes I make them, these guys are kind of looking at us, but sometimes I make them looking up with the nose pointed up and then their little mouths round, so like they're singing, which is kind of cool too. There's so many expressions and ways you can paint them. You know, it's a fun thing to do if you want to look at expressions. I was recently with my group painting uh, a little tutorial on how to incorporate simple figures into their paintings. And simple, I mean tiny, you know, little circle for a head and just a little triangle for shoulders. But if you look at, just Google up facial expressions, animated uh, facial expressions, cartoon facial expressions, and you can see how amazing it is just the way you put an eyebrow or a shape of an eye or the way they're looking, different emotions and things you can get. So even as simple as little snowmen, you could look that up and really go to town and make them all a little different. But these guys now have noses and little mouths. I put, like I said, I thin my paint down, my black paint. I've just got a small detail brush. And I like just little smiles on them. I will give them maybe a little blushed cheek. They're out in the cold, so they have a little bit of a rosy cheek. We could do that if we want. Little smiles, that's what I've done just for them. You could, um, like I say, get much more carried away or you could keep it simple. And I do put little um, back end of my brush, some little buttons. I'll give them a scarf. And depending on how big the back end of your brush is, is how big your little dots will come out. And this is almost dry. That's drying a little bit. Um, let me put a scarf on them while we're waiting for the other things to dry. So what about colors? Let's... Oh, we'll do a red scarf on the little guy. To, again, I like to bring, have a color palette and sort of bring all the colors in, not go too many different ones where I know I want red because of my little wreath. I've got my red berries. I'm going to have my red cardinal. I think I'll do a red scarf. It could be as simple as that, just a little scarf. Again, I sometimes make this the little bits flying off, the little ties flying off. And I will give that maybe a little highlight with some white afterwards. And what about you? Uh, hmm. I couldn't keep it simple and just do a dark green. Let's do that since I have it on my palette. And it's just, I uh, just make the little scarf shape. I make a little circle that's a knot, say. And then the little tails of the scarf you could just bring out. Little rosy cheeks. Let's see if we can put a little something on the face for a little rosy cheek. I'm just going to take some white and a little bit of red. Get just, um, I, I want to do it pretty light. I don't want it to look like, you know, he's wearing makeup or anything. So a little, just a little bit of a rosy cheek. And I can only really do it on one side. I, I could have, I would have probably done these before the nose. But can you see, it's just, it's hardly noticeable. It's a little rosy cheek there. We're flying right along, right, you guys? Any questions? Like I say, I'll come back after two. Let's see, does the paint stay on the glass? Uh, so it does. Use the multi-purpose paint. Now this, of course, if I afterwards take a knife or a fingernail, maybe I could probably scrape it off, but this isn't going to be washed. But for your wine glasses and anything washable, this paint allows you to bake it in your oven and then it's washable. I've even put it in the dishwasher. I tell people hand washing, but I have painted with these and put them in the dishwasher even, but don't. I mean, I'm, I'm just, I do, but uh, it will stay on. So it's a matter of putting maybe um, a little bit of, of like, like the coat of blue I did for the snowman and then let it dry good and then go back on top of it, put multiple coats, but make sure it dries really well in between because otherwise you're wiping off that first coat when you put your second one on. Hey, Debbie. Um, what was I? Sorry, another question. I was just, oh, the lantern in Christmas. No, in Michael's, it was actually in the fall Halloween stuff that was 70% off. That's where I found it in the section.
and with all of Halloween and fall. Alrighty, now, um, the little bird, I'm gonna paint a little bit. Let's see, we've got about 11 minutes. It's drying, and let me see if I can get it a little brighter red now. So I'm just gonna get the shape of his head. I can leave a little of that light color even sh shining through if I want. And it's gonna have like a little yellow beak. I have to get some yellow paint out. And I'm going to put some just little thin white lines straggling out of that nest so it looks more like twigs and not just a brown mass. I can mix a little brown and white and get a lighter brown too. And it's just a matter of just some little, just to make it look a little bit more like the nest is made of twigs. I'll hold it up close for you to see too, so no worries. And I'll take a picture of it afterwards. And you can always find this replay. If you guys popped in a little later, the replay stays up. I didn't even think to say, welcome to my Tinker's Cart Art People and Craft Round the Clock. I jumped right in, but we are, this is my Craft Round the Clock segment. And, um, which is so fun. I just had the had, um, had it on today looking at all the cool things. It's every single day, Monday through Friday, crafting all day long, you guys, every 45 minutes. Please check out the page. And if you are a craft around the clock um, viewer, if you check out my page, you'll find all kinds of little cool painting tips and projects and things. Little, just a little yellow beak there on my guy. He, the Cardinals had that little black patch on their face. It really, from a distance, you don't need much. You just get that little red bird, give that little cone thing, this little triangle bit, and a little white eye, and you have got a cardinal without really much, much at all there. And just a little white dot to indicate the little highlight on his little eye there. Um, I wanted to just put, sometimes, you know, I, I will shade my um, hats and scarves, Sometimes I will just, well, I'll put a little shade here because that's going to be like the little brim of that little hat. So I put a line of the darker color, darker, whatever it is. I usually just use a darker shade, green, a good little green. But I like to sometimes add polka dots or stripes or a little tassel on the end. So um, let me go back and touch up because, you know, I added a little white here to make it cover on the tree. So I'm just filling it in with a little more of the green. And I'm going to put a little bit of that dark green maybe along this side here because this is our side where we're putting our shadows. Dry the brush off, soften. Let's put a little dark green tassel maybe. So a little tassel is just simply a little round dot of paint and then pulling out a little bit of a, a, little bit of a tassel there. And same over here. You don't need much. You could shade a little bit on your scarf if you wanted. I'm gonna just take a little black into my green. Maybe shade around the top of those little scarf tails. Maybe a little dark around the edge. If you go in, the highlighted area would be like right in the front of that scarf. You could just take that lighter green that we used for this hat maybe and just put a little of that in. Looks a little like it is um, little highlight and same over here you could take and just put little tassels on the end of your scarf just little lines of the same color I'm gonna put some stripes I'm dying to put stripes on that hat a bit because you know we've got like seven minutes left so um, highlights in their eyes even though they're little uh, snowmen still tiniest little white dot in the eye just helps them come alive a little bit can always shade a little underneath if you want to get picky and uh, you could take a little bit of, I'm taking just my orange and some brown and just a little stripe on the bottom of the nose just gives it a little bit, you know, when you put a little shadow on something or a highlight or both, you're really giving form to the little object and some of them are so insignificant you don't need to, but sometimes just a little bit kind of is cool. I'm going to do some stripes on the red scarf I am going to maybe put dots on the hat. Maybe that's what I'll do. So I just little stripes on the scarf, which could be done doing it in white. I would need white to cover that red. So if I want it, it doesn't have to stay white, but it's a nice base. And you could then go over it with another color. I like the idea of the red and white kind of candy cane-ish, you know, for, for, for winter, holiday. 
and I think I might just do some polka dots on, on the stocking cap, which again, back end of the brush, super easy, right? Just, um, just polka dots. You know what I think I'll do though too, is I get polka dots on the hat. <clears throat> the little brim I think I'm going to do with stripes, just because it's like maybe a little ribbed knit hat. I'm thinking about this too much, right? <laughs> I like details. All right, a little bit of that. So you can go crazy. You can go ahead and do designs. You can do zigzags, whatever. Um, I think I'm going to leave that as is and just show you guys how to put snow on it now. So you've got the big guy with the cardinal. You've got little branches. You can see the little little kind of sticks on the bottom with some uh, little red dots. You could easily paint mittens on their hands. Um, I'm... I'm not going to because that's cutting it too close, but you could just paint little mittens on the end of their stick hands. Um, here's just a quick, I'll show you what some of the others I've done. So again, the little dog, you could take whatever kind of dog shape you have, and it's just simply painted in the, the blue like I did, highlighted with some white, and he turned them right into a little snow dog. I love to take their little hats and curl them. And um, we're going to spatter snow on now. But can you see they're just kind of fun and simple? I painted them on magnets and on ornaments. This little guy's just looking up. He's kind of fun. Earmuffs are fun to put on them. Okay, spattering the snow. Something like this might be a little harder because you've got all of these areas, which you can either tape up and spatter, which I think I will because I like that look. Um... Or you could simply take your little round tool or brush and then just dot on some snowflakes. But I'm going to quickly, because, you know, I like to gamble. I've got four minutes to do this. And I'm just going to put the blue tape around the bits where I don't want the snow to spill. Um, and be careful. Like, my computer has snow on it. Anything in the area that you don't want to have snow on, just uh, remove it because the little spatters go everywhere. And this tape is great. And I think I will put some on the sides. There's a little metal bit you see going down the sides. I think we could probably do that with just a little piece of tape. And this is great fun. Um, I do it with an old toothbrush and I'll show you. But if you want to make starry skies or snowy skies, this is so fun. An old toothbrush. Really thin down your white paint. Sometimes if it's too thin, it might run. If it's too thick, you won't get it to spatter. But just kind of play around with the consistency of it. And it is just spattering the snow on there. So fun. And you know what? If you something you don't like on there, put a little extra spatter in front of it. You'll never notice. Looks great on the glass, though. So there you go. Easy peasy on glass. I use the, the you know, the all-purpose, the uh, multi-purpose paints, right? Again, they're sometimes recognizable by the little icon on the top. And um, they work well for anything glass, ceramic, that sort of thing. And before I go, I did pop into Michael's, ah, sorry, Target for that little section I told you. Look at these little guys. They're adorable. I'm going to paint some little snowmen. These little Santas with the little trees hats. These were uh, $3 for the two of them. Uh, well, each package of two. Really cute. So I do check out those sections. I check out Dollar Tree. I check out the clearances anywhere. You've also seen me paint on crazy things like ice skates and bowling pins. So the yard sales and the flea markets and the vintage stores, you can find some cool stuff to paint. So just keep it an open mind and not always think it has to be a canvas or or something meant to be painted. You could paint on all kinds of things. And if you look on my page, you'll see the gourds I painted and so many cool things. And I try to do some unusual things. So anyways, I appreciate you guys watching so much. Um, I'm going to go back and 
look at the comments. Oh, Ruth said she picked some of those up this weekend. Yeah, they're adorable, but the stuff goes there so fast. So that's why when I showed you this the other day, I said I better paint it up fast because I think, I, I mean, I just bought this a few days ago. So do check out that clearance section. I'll take a picture of this all done and put it up. And um, I'm getting ready to sign off. Please stick around on Craft Around the Clock to see the next crafter. She'll be coming up at four. And uh, so many cool things. I'm learning. I'm lear I told you guys this. I'm learning to tie bows now. So I'm so excited because I'm going to be a little more craftier than just painting. So hi, Amy and Gloria. Thank you guys all for watching. I'm going to sign off and I'll see you next time.